Hey guys, Dave Lalana at Sticky RX Refinishing Solutions. So tonight I'm in the home garage. I've got my black 355 F1 GTS there. I uh, had the car about 10 years now. And when I got it, I only got one fob and I did not have the pin number. So anybody that knows anything about these cars is you typically get three fobs, two black, one red, red is the master and you get a four digit pin. And what you can do with the four digit pin is a few things. You can put the key in and you can cycle it with key clicks to model the code. Like, so <clears throat> for example, if your code was 4411, you would put the key in and go click, 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 click for four. We'd wait a couple seconds. Click, 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 click for four again, wait. And then one click for one, so on and so forth. There's a procedure to do this. And when you do that, you can start the car if the fob would be dead, or you can also open up the immobilizer and that allows you, allows you to teach new fobs to the immobilizer. People have a misconception that you're using the immobilizer to program the fob. That's not correct. It's kind of the other way around. So when I got the car, I reached out to Elgar Ferrari and for, I don't know, I think it was like 350 bucks or something like that, I bought the pin code retrieval services. So for a few hundred bucks, Ferrari goes back in their archives. You got to prove you're an owner and all that stuff that you own that car, so they're not giving away to anybody. And they will retrieve your prior pin number. So they did that with me and it's kind of funny, you get this little part number label and they hand write the code on, which was 5523. So I tried that with the key sequence many, many, many times. Uh, I'm 99.9% .9 certain I did it correctly. I thought I got it to work one time, never could get it to work again. Uh, obviously I was probably losing my mind on the one time. So what we don't know right now is, is that the proper pin for the car? I mean, that's the one that they have listed from the car being new, but I'm the third owner of the car and the second owner had it for 12 years. So I doubt it was changed, but it either was changed before and not recorded, uh, or there's something wrong with my perhaps ignition key and it won't accept it. So I bought new fobs, a set of three. At the time, 10 years ago, you could only get black cases. And what they do is they just label them. So this one says master and the other two say slave on them. And I couldn't do anything with those. And by the way, you get a new pin number with that. Cause once again, you open the system up and you teach the immobilizer these new fobs. And then that pin number that comes with those, obviously I'm not gonna disclose that here, that becomes the new pin for the car. So could never get that to work. And my buddy, Mark, Ferrari Fobs, great guy. He's been on me for six years. Come on, Dave, let me come out of your house and we'll get this all sorted. And I've been crazy, crazy busy. Well, it just so happens that Mark bought a car from Buffalo for his son from a dealer. There it is. And he was making arrangements to come pick it up. And he's coming a little sooner than thought. He actually may come tonight. And if not tonight, he's gonna to be here tomorrow, but he's in Toronto right now. He thinks he's gonna come in tonight. So I'm about to get into the car and get the immobilizer out of the car. And stay tuned, I'll show you how we're gonna do that, okay? Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is go in the bonnet and disconnect the battery, like messing with electronics. I like to do that. Now, one thing that you need to know on an OBD2 car, when you kill the battery switch, you wipe out the readiness monitor. So if you're gonna go for an inspection where they're gonna look at that, you gotta do drive cycles to get the readiness monitors back active. And that could take, you know, these cars 50 miles or so, there's a procedure to do it. But I don't need to get an inspector right away and I'll drive it plenty of miles beforehand. So I'm not worried about the readiness monitors going to hell. So I'm gonna kill the battery and then we'll get started, okay? Okay, so on the passenger side or right-hand side of the car, you have this little access panel, a couple little thumb screws and right below is the battery switch. So I'm gonna turn that off. Okay, at that point the battery's off and now I can mess with electronics. Okay, so given that I purchased these fobs about 10 years ago, uh, if I press them, I still see a red LED light, light up, but I'm gonna change the batteries. So 
These are a special A23 battery. So I'll show you how to do that here. Pretty simple. I'll do the master here first. So there's just one Phillips screwdriver. I should say one Phillips screw in the back side. So now I keep batteries and a screwdriver with me in the car. And I need just a little thin blade straight screwdriver here. Doesn't really have a coin slot, so I'm just gonna grab anything on the edge here and I don't wanna carve this up. So I also keep a thin blade screwdriver too. So I'll open that up and you see that's some sort of generic battery in there. This is the plus side here. So we'll remove that. And there you go, put the plus side in. It's right in the mold as well. Okay, pretty straightforward. And just put the cover back on. You know, really, you know, really fine tip screwdriver for this Phillips. Okay, so got that done, and I'll change the other ones. Okay, so now, to get at the immobilizer, this is the driver's side seat. What we have to do is remove this access panel, and I have an F1 car, so it's a little bit larger of a panel. So you need a Phillips head screwdriver to pull that panel off. Okay, so now that we've got that panel off, this is the immobilizer and you see it's in a case that's riveted. So we're gonna take these screws out around the side to free the whole box up and then we have to drill out those rivets. Okay, so I just got my snap-on socket wrench here and it's an eight millimeter socket and these are uh, nylocks. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get these all out. Okay, so you have three locations, one here, one here, and then one here. This one has a washer, these do not, but if you look, they have little wire ties on them for this blue antenna wire. So be careful with that. Okay, so now you see I have the immobilizer in its case free from the mounting, but of course I can't get it out when I'm drilling those rivets out. So it looks like we've got, there's two on this side, two here, six here. Now here's something interesting. As I look at the bottom, it's missing rivets. So perhaps this immobilizer was changed before. So we're gonna see. So I'll get some tools and get ready to drill those okay, out. So I measured a couple of holes on the bottom and it's a little over an eighth of an inch. So I got a 128 thousandths drill bit, 0.128 to drill out these rivets. So I got some plastic down here and I'm gonna try doing this right over this bag to catch any chips. So. So I'll start with these couple on the top. These are aluminum rivets, it should be pretty straightforward. There we go. The head of that one's already off, okay. On to the next. Okay, so now I can pull the case apart. There you go. And there you have it. The back of the case, you can still see the pieces of rivets in there. I'll get those out. Front of the case. And there is the immobilizer. And now I can get to the, the pins and unplug the pins and pull this out. So there you go, immobilizer's out of the car. Okay, so here I am back at the bench, uh, part of my messy bench here. And you can see there's still the, I'll call it the ass end of the rivets in the case. So I have to drill those out. 
And then here's the cover plate. And, you know, examining this, even though it didn't have the two rivets on the bottom, it doesn't look like it was messed with before. Um, I put a couple little marks in there right now using the screwdriver to hold that one rivet from turning. So I don't think this was changed. We're gonna see, it's gonna be interesting to see what pin is on here. So I'll take the drill and I'll just drill these a little bit more so I can tap them out and get them out of the sheet metal. Okay, so I have all those rivets out of the inner piece of the sheet metal here. And as I mentioned to you, I used a 128 drill. So here's the drill here. And you can see from a sizing standpoint, I mean, it's, I'm rubbing right there. That's, that's the exact size drill you need. 0.128 okay so um and you don't ever want to drill more than the head because you don't want to poke through it and hit the immobilizer itself okay mark for ifobs in the house okay we had a little bit of wine and pizza what the hell right yeah. and now mark's got this little bitchin little device i can't show you any more than that or it'll kill me but the we were able to test my original number and it is not this pin code so uh 350 bucks something like that i paid yeah it's normally 800 dollars for a wrong number oh That's yeah good. so now we're gonna open up the brain here and mark is gonna determine what pin is actually in there so at some point this must have been changed in the car or their records suck um I'm not sure what it is, but we're gonna find out. So he's getting his gear ready. Uh, I can't show everything because he'll kill me, right? Yes. Trade secrets, but yes. we'll get this all together here and we'll be back. Okay, so Mark just pulled the pin off the immobilizer and look at this. So Ferrari told me it was 5523 and Mark tested it and it was not that number. And I looked at a mobilizer case over really well, and I could tell it was never drilled out, and this was never changed. Well, he just figured out, I can't say how, and he knows what the pin is in my current car. It's 5723. So their records had one number off. Look at that. So now it confirms that this thing was never changed, which is what I suspected. Isn't that pretty wild? So I spent $350 to get a code that didn't work. It wasn't the wrong code. You gotta love that. Don't you love that, Mark? That's typical. <laughs> and, and the price went up. It's and not the... $350 anymore, it's $800. Is it really? Yes. Wow. I'll do it for half that. Wow. This guy's the man. So now we're gonna, uh, we're gonna put the new pin in, cause now that's recorded with the car and the new fob. So we'll get that done. Stay okay, there. so with Mark's little rig here, we now have taught the new, well, 10 year old, but brand new, brand new fobs with a new pin. I'm not gonna show you what they are, but we taught them this pin is no longer good, but these are all three working for the immobilizer. And all I have to do is put it back in the car. And Mark also does this really cool thing here. He can cut keys and he can make these little key tags. So he made those for me because I don't have them, which is very cool. So here's one of the, one of the keys that he can make. So look at that. It's not in focus, but pretty neat guy. Pretty neat guy. Now I got another fob. I guess I'll give it to him. I don't know if it doesn't do me any good, right? So I just, I just keep it as a spare. Okay, yeah. there you okay, go. Okay, so I'm getting ready to put the immobilizer back in the car and the case needs to be riveted back together. Now, I originally wasn't going to rivet it together. Unfortunately though, when you put the immobilizer in, like so, you only fasten the immobilizer and the rear portion of the case. So if I want to put the front part of the case in, which I do because I don't want the car to be incomplete, you can't just set it on and have it be fastened. So the only way to fasten it is with the rivets, or you, I suppose I could put sheet metal screws in, but I don't want to do that. So, you know, the factory didn't have the two rivets on the bottom in. They had six, two on three sides. And these are eighth inch rivets. Uh, more than likely in, in uh, Italy, they use metric. But you have a what's called a grip range on a rivet, and that's basically this length. So I have these shallow ones. One thing that I don't love is this, the diameter of the head of the rivet is a little bit smaller than what the factory had in. 
Uh, is anybody gonna come check the rivets? I highly doubt it, <laughs> but it's just one of those OCD things. And of course, I've got our rivet tool here. So we'll get started, we'll get this back in the car. Okay, so I've got the immobilizer here. I'm gonna plug the uh, connectors back in. Okay, now I'll fish the back side of the case around. There's a little scallop in the case for this little umbilical cord here. I'll get the front of the case. Okay. So now it's within the case, I'll get some rivets. Okay, this is a tad bit awkward, but. Okay, there's one. Okay, number two. There's the little piece there you want to be sure to take out. Okay, so now I've got six of the eight rivets in. Again, I'm gonna leave these two on the bottom out. And now I can put the immobilizer back over the posts. And the antenna's got these little wire ties here that go right over the studs. Fish that around. Okay, so I'll get the nuts. Okay, only one position had a washer. That's the far side that does not have the little wire ties. These are nylock nuts. Okay, took the antenna there. Okay, got the cover here. Now there's, with an F1 car, there's two longer screws and two shorter. The shorter ones go on the bottom, the longer ones go on the top. Okay, cover plate's on, and we'll give it a try. Okay, you gotta turn the battery switch back on. There we go. And I'll just we'll close the door. And this is the, this is a new slave. Yep. It's giving me the double beep because I have the hood open, but you can see the immobilizer LED flashing. Actually, I'm locked right now. Unlocked. And you can see that's the stereo making a noise but the LED is out, so it works. Yeah, I would normally start the car right now, but I've got it really close to the back wall and I don't want to blow soot over the garage, but you know, the immobilizer light went out, so we know we're good. So everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you find the video helpful.